A year or so ago, OpenAI released Dolly, an interesting twist on GPT-3. And while we found it mind-blowing, it was mostly just a really interesting research project. But more recently, they released Dolly 2, and now they've even gone so far as to commercially license Dolly 2. And I think what we're seeing is the beginning of an entirely new industry that could make a fortune for the right people. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So if you don't know, OpenAI is another of Elon Musk's companies. He's an investor in it. He's not particularly involved in it. But anyway, it's really interesting that Elon Musk is involved in so many of these society-changing kinds of businesses. And as you can see here, I actually finally got access to Dolly 2 just today. And it's kind of a weird coincidence because I just did a video with Ash Jafari and definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But he was talking about the commercialization aspects of Dolly 2 and the amazing possibilities involved with it and now I'm actually experiencing that myself and so I want to do a video on this in particular. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of walk through Dolly and what it does and how it works and then I'm going to talk about why this is so society changing and why it could take OpenAI from a really cool research type of company to one of the most wealthy companies in the world. So once you gain access to Dolly and you do have to sign up for a wait list right now, there's like a million people on the wait list, but they are letting people in, obviously, since I got in. But I will leave a link to that in the description so you can like, you know, sign up if you haven't yet. But once you get access to it, it's pretty straightforward. You have a collection, obviously, after you've done some things. And so I did this. And if you roll over this, you can see a husky in a tuxedo photorealistic. These are all my text prompts I did. And this takes about 20 seconds per thing, so. <laughs> thought that was pretty freaking good. <laughs> anyway, a pug and two huskies smoking cigars and playing poker. Yes, I have a pug and I have two huskies, so I have a tendency to like that kind of stuff. So you can see this was digital art sort of variety, and you've got a pug playing chess, pop art variety, so I love the expression on that pug there. And then this is an interesting one too. This is a variation from an original. So this was a beach photograph from Jekyll Island I took a couple of months ago, and if you click on it, you can see the original, but then this is actually completely generated. It's like a variation on a theme that is done by Dolly. Interestingly enough, there are restrictions. I tried to do a beach photo with a bunch of people kind of in the distance, but it said they were too identifiable as people. So I think if you do variations, you have to keep people out of the pictures right now. And obviously things have to be G-rated, you know. <laughs> no hate speech, no pornography, things like that. So they do have restrictions and they keep you from, you know, making pictures like that. So that's that's all to the good. But anyway, this is a really interesting thing too. Uh, one thing I noticed about this was that, and I can't really show the original, unfortunately I can't pop it up quite as big, but the, the original, like the details in the clouds and stuff are more granular. There's like little details in the clouds, little details in the palm fronds and things like that. So there is a little bit more detail. It's a little bit crisper. Um, that's one of the problems with diffusion models and things like that. It's just, they tend to average stuff. So they tend to be a little bit softer. So I definitely see this in the variation, but still, you know, it's it's a pretty lovely image. Um, the other big restriction, of course, is that this is a square. It's not a rectangle. This image was originally a portrait image, so it was taller than it was wide, and I can only do a square image out of Dolly. So that is a, a significant restriction, but, you know, this is early, early, early days. And then I tried this, an oil painting in the style of Bob Ross, who is a famous painter from the 80s and 90s on PBS, of a water bottle filled with peanuts. And so you can look at that. I don't think it captured the Bob Ross style, but it definitely looks like, you know, kind of an oil painting. Definitely has peanuts. Uh, not positive that's a water bottle, but anyway, pretty darn close. But you can see that these images are no longer just kind of like, oh, that's cute and adorable and stuff. These are actual usable images. I mean, look at this. You can, you know, you could put this on the cover of a magazine or something if it was high enough resolution. This is really funny and really kind of wonderful. So I'm sure you're dying to find out how this works. So I'm going to click on this. You can upload an image or you can just, you know, type something in. So let's do like uh, a robot making money using artificial I hope I can spell it. <laughs> Thank goodness for spell check. <laughs> okay, a robot making money using artificial intelligence uh, digital art. 
right? So I think you're supposed to put a comma in there. Anyway, something like that. Okay, so what we do is we push the button and you can see it is not a long time period. It goes, it's about 20 seconds. You can also see that my previous searches over here, like they've been populated. So you can see some other things I've done. And there we go. So uh, yeah, so this is, I guess, digital art, but you can see multiple different possibilities. I did this on purpose because I thought, why not do this for a thumbnail? This is commercially licensable. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but I will probably use one of these at least as a part of my thumbnail for this episode, which is pretty cool. So I think ultimately I like this one the best. And so you have a couple of things you can do. Number one, you can save it to your collection. So go to my collection, and so now it's saved in my collection, but I can also download it. And so now it's downloaded into my downloads folder. So, I mean, that's pretty amazing. And like I said, you are commercially allowed to use this as long as you credit Dolly 2, which obviously I am since this entire video is about that. But basically you can see how you can create this whole thing uh, it takes almost no time. You get these different variations, right? We got four of these and maybe you would like this one better or this one better, I don't know. Or you could just do something where you can say, generate something, surprise me. You can do more variations on this. You can resubmit this again. You could say maybe, maybe making money instead of making money, making lots of money. <laughs> Why not? Something like that, right? And then we can change this from digital art to pop art and we can go ahead and click generate for that as well. And again, it shows you some possibilities here. It, so it gives you some ideas, right? You know, digital art. And uh, I know I've seen impressionist painting and I've seen pop art and I've seen in the style of and things like that. So now we've got, oh wow. <laughs> I really kind of like these. Um, <laughs> let's see, I'm trying to think. these they make me smile. I mean, a lot of times these things are really make me happy. So I don't know. What do you think that would look like if we chop that apart? It would have to be kind of rectangular. So it would be a little bit higher. Um, well, let's go ahead and download that. Why not? We'll do another possibility here. I actually think I like that one the best because it's very, very big, but I could also possibly see this one too, because again, we're going to have to cut this rectangularly. So the shape of the frame will be different. So I'll go ahead and download that too. But in terms of my collection, I'm going to go ahead and save that to my collection. And then of course I can go back to my collection and I can see my new images that I've created. I can always go and generate more of them, all of that kind of stuff. So this is a really, really clean interface. It's really fantastic how well it works. And here's the kicker with all of this. So you can see I have 37 download credits left. I got 50 for free when I started at the end of every month. So today is the 27th. So on the 27th of August, it will reset and I will get a new 15 images for free. So yes, you don't get 50 every month, you get 15. So I'm kind of thinking this is like, uh, you know, what's that old drug dealer thing where they give you the first hit for free, right? <laughs> so like first hits free. So basically they give you 50 images to generate, have a lot of fun with and enjoy yourself. But then if you want to purchase more, you just go to buy credits and it's really simple, 115 credits for $15. And so basically what that means is every single time you ask Dolly to do something, it's a credit. So if, you know, when I said generate the robot, picture pop art, that was one credit. If I uploaded a photograph and I said, give me variations, that's a credit. If I then took one of the outputs of Dolly and said, give me more variations, that's another credit. So it's really, really simple to conceptualize how this all works. It's also pretty darn inexpensive. I mean, heck, 15 bucks, you pay that for Netflix, right? And you can have an awful lot of fun with 115 images a month goofing around and downloading things. Just as a quick FYI, the free credits expire at the end of every month, so you can't collect them over time, but the paid for credits, I believe, last a year. So if you pay $15, you get 115 credits and you can use them as much time as you want. All right, so that's the perspective from the consumer's point of view. What's the deal and why am I saying this is so potentially society changing and how this could make OpenAI so much money? Well, number one, of course, they're charging money for these images now. And there will be some people, this is a commercial license, you're allowed to use it with credit, which means again, you can put it on a magazine cover, you could put it on blog posts, which I'm gonna talk about more at the end, so stick around for that. You can also put it as thumbnails for YouTube videos, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a real commercial need for this kind of thing. 
And of course, to pay a graphic designer to do this kind of work is very expensive. 15 bucks is absolutely nothing. And you can get multiple choices and you can get it really, really quickly, right? If you gave a graphic designer the, exa the exact same spec as I gave here, which is a robot making lots of money using artificial intelligence, pop art style. If you had one on your staff, you might get it back in a day. If you went out and tried to get a freelance person, it might take a week or something to get that back. So the fact that this is 20 seconds and it's 15 bucks if you're paying for it, I mean, that it's completely completely disruptive for the way graphic design kind of stuff is going to work. And as people get better at asking these questions and these prompts, it'll replace more and more graphic designers. So that is hugely disruptive. Again, the talk that I had with Ash yesterday, you should definitely check that out if you haven't, because we go into detail about that and how people get disrupted. And he was talking about how you don't see it, you don't see it, you don't see it, and then all of a sudden it's completely disruptive. And this kind of just did that, right? We suddenly went from like, oh, cute little toy to like, holy crap, this is gonna replace graphic designers. And if you're a copywriter or a lawyer or a bunch of other professions and you think you're safe from this, you're not because GPT-3, which this is based on, is very generalizable. And they're working on GPT-4, which is going to be even better in the future. So, okay, you might think like, this does pretty decent jobs. It's gonna make OpenAI some money. That's a really cool thing, but it's not society changing and it's not going to make them lots and lots of money. But here's the real kicker. What I just did talking to you when I picked these two images and previously when I picked these and downloaded them and things like that is me as a human being giving feedback to Dolly2 about what I like. And if you know what you're doing and these people really know what they're doing, you can utilize that feedback to create better work in the future. So basically what I assume OpenAI is doing in the background is they're looking at this. And if I open this up, if I go like, oh, interesting, look at that picture, that may give it a little thumbs up, kind of like a little like, oh, he thought that was good enough. But then if I choose to either save this image or favorite the image into my collection, that gives like a big double thumbs up to Dolly that this was a good representation of what I was looking for. So it can go back and it can take the text prompt, a robot making lots of money using artificial intelligence pop art style and it can go, this one was a good one, according to John. He thinks that that's a good visual output for the text prompt. And that allows Dolly to train itself and to get better. So what I'm saying is, okay, we've got this level, this quality of results right now, but what is it gonna look like two or three months from now? If we have millions of people using this software over and over and over again, and then picking their favorites out of it, it's training Dolly to get better. So in two or three months for the same $15, for my 115 credits, I might get something that's more qualitatively better than this one. I might just be like mind blown and say like, oh, that's even better. And actually that might be a really interesting experiment. This is the end of July. So let's say I wait till the end of September, somewhere around the end of September, maybe October 1st, and revisit this video and actually type in the exact same prompt and then see what I get. <laughs> so let's see if OpenAI is actually training itself as much as I think it's going to be. But what I believe is gonna happen is in two months, I'm going to get a much, much better output of this machine. It's already really astounding, but what I'm saying is even with the same underlying architecture, with more training time, this could get so, so much better. And then you get things like GPT-4, which is gonna be much, much bigger than GPT-3 was. And then if they can plug that back into the architecture that they have for Dolly, they can make Dolly-3 even better than Dolly-2 is. And remember, there are other competitors out there. There's Google, DeepMind, and others who are working on the same kind of thing. So this is a competitive landscape and they're all gonna be pushing. And now that OpenAI has shown the commercial possibilities, everybody's gonna be jumping on this bandwagon, I have a feeling. But what we're gonna see here is a flywheel, a data flywheel. What we're getting is Dolly is creating images. Human beings are selecting the images they like. That gives Dolly feedback. Dolly gets better at it. People find the work more valuable. So maybe by next year, instead of $15 for 115 credits, or maybe Dolly 2 will always be a $15 for 115 credits, but there will be a Dolly 3 and you have to pay $50 for 100 credits or something like that, right? But people will do that because they'll be like, oh, the quality of the output is so much better. So basically we've got this data flywheel where 
where we're getting new data, we're getting feedback, it's training it, it's making this better, makes it more valuable, people will pay more money for it, then they do feedback again, they give it more data, the thing gets better, people find it more valuable, they'll pay more money, and we have this incredible virtuous cycle that's going on. And again, this is not just OpenAI, but any of these major competitors that are in here. But here's the thing, this is a winner takes most type of arena. This is not something where I can come in and go like, oh, I'm gonna make one of these too, because I'm already so far behind in terms of data collection, architecture, all of this other stuff. Even if I'm a super smart person, the odds are that I can't catch up to this anymore because they're just too far ahead. And they're gonna get further and further ahead because they've got human beings who are in the loop now helping them make this even better. So this is something where there's gonna be a concentration of wealth. You're going to see just a few companies like OpenAI and DeepMind and others who are going to make more and more money. And yeah, there will be a few competitors who come up with genius ideas. I'm, I'm not discounting that, but there won't be many. So it's going to be a few companies that are going to be making most of the money. And this is going to majorly disrupt businesses. It's going to disrupt graphic design. It will eventually disrupt writing. It'll disrupt legal, accounting, and many, many other fields, like pretty much anything you can imagine. I even had a thumbnail I ended up not using of Elon Musk inside the Tesla bot. And I was thinking like, you could have Elon Musk, right? AI Elon Musk. And basically you just have a CEO that's a robot, but has Elon Musk's personality. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anyway, I'm just saying that, you know, this kind of thing will disrupt jobs beyond what you even imagine is possible. So this is just the beginning. This is what Ash in his articles in our conversation is calling AI job suites. These are things that AI is going to be able to do that will completely take away the need for human beings or mostly take it away. Even if it only does 80% of the work, that means that if you have five people that you've hired to do graphic design, for example, in your company, you could get rid of four of them and only have one person who manages something like Dolly and it's gonna cost you a lot less money. So that's going to be hugely disruptive and as Ash says, it's going to be really hard for people to reskill because this is happening across so many industries at the same time. So it's going to be an amazing thing to watch, but I really wanted to touch specifically on Dolly too because it's such a clear and concise example of exactly how this disruption is already happening. And I wanna add this to the video before I sign off. I'm going to be doing a blog over on Artomatic.io. I'll leave a link to it in the description. The blog is gonna talk about the same stuff. It's going to expand on how Dolly 2 is disrupting the industry and making all of these changes. I'll have some of these pictures from here too as well. So it'll be kind of a companion with this video piece. I'm trying out this dual modality thing where I'm doing YouTube video and also a blog attached to it. And as a way of sweetening that deal, if you go over there, read the article, and you do have to sign in to leave like a like or a comment, but if you leave a comment, I will do my very best to respond to it personally over there as a way of saying thank you for that. I know, you know, when you get hundreds or thousands of comments, it's really hard to respond to all of them on YouTube. So if you go to the effort of going over there and, and commenting on the article version of this, then I promise I will do my best to respond to your questions. So there's my little carrot for you. So please do check it out. You feel free to check out the other blog entries as well because there are several other ones. But anyway, I'll be really interested to know what you all think about that. And if you like this dual media type of entry, definitely let me know that. In the meantime, if you did enjoy this, please do like this video so YouTube's AI knows that you liked it. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.